Well, we all saw this one coming, right? These new RTX 3060 cards not being available and not an MSRP, just as I predicted in the last video. <laughs> yep. Asus sent over one of their ROG Strix RTX 3060 OCs for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux and see how this card stacks up. Even though these GPUs are well above MSRP, uh, we're just going to continue to show you how weird these 3060s really are. And people really didn't get the hint that the price that I put in the last video for the US price was actually a lot closer to the mark than that. $329 MSRP that you're never going to see. It's just never ever going to happen. You need to really come to grips with that. And just to add to that as well, we've got no idea about pricing or availability in your region or whether or not you'll actually be able to buy these cards anytime soon. Now I've seen people saying that they bought one at an inflated price. I said it before that you just shouldn't get your hopes up for trying to get these cards at MSRP. Now I know this is not what a lot of you want to hear, but that's the reality of the world that we're living in right now. You can buy stuff or you can't buy stuff. And even if you can buy stuff, it's just far too expensive. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack in this video and there's chapters in all of our videos. As usual, you can jump to any section of the video, but make sure you actually watch the whole video to get the context of what we're trying to say in this video. And these are also the out of the box figures for this GPU as well. All of our GPU content is designed to be this way because a vast majority of people will never overclock. We're actually coming back to do overclocking in a roundup of all the cards that we've got. And yeah, just wait a week or so. We're gonna show you how these cards overclock, but for now, it's all out of the box stuff. Okay, let's get these benchmarks and comparisons out of the way first. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. The graphs change because the cards perform differently and some cards get knocked off the graph. We use our regular test bench for all the testing as well to give you guys accurate results based on that testing hardware. That basically means that all the GPUs that you see on these graphs have been tested the exact same way. As far as comparing the 3060 to the 1060, I don't have any 1060s anymore. I gave my last one to my cousin Carl. He watched the last 3060 video and said thanks for mentioning him, giving him that GPU. But yeah, I think it's probably better just to give him a full shout out. So hi, Carl. Anyway, let's kick this off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic little pause button at any time during the video to take a look at the graphs for a bit longer. Alrighty, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we're doing it the same way we always do. 4K optimized, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. I tried not to say meth again, but it was really hard. And we get comments along the lines of people saying, hey, you're using stock open GL versus DX11 with Linux for comparison, and oh, the kernel version's wrong, and all this stuff, guys. It's the out of the box experience only. Oh, 
Next up, Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux. That's why we use it. It's repeatable. Let's see what happened. We ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3060 OC above 56 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result is actually to be expected given that uh, the cooler is so much bigger than it has any business being. And be aware though, we also do this on an open air test bench. The results in a closed system will be different from what we observed here, but I suspect it won't be much different given how big this cooler is. We include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with everything we've ever tested. So yeah, it's pretty reliable if you ask me. As far as power consumption, we observed it hitting a board power draw maxing out at 169 watts at full load over the period of one hour. This is again, like the Gigabyte card, a single watt less than the 170 watt board power that is in the reference spec. So yeah, pretty standard, didn't expect to see more than that. We also observed the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3060 OC being absolutely silent over our stress testing period with zero coil wine. In a closed system, you're just not gonna hear this card. Now these observations about sound and acoustics make way more sense than a bunch of numbers plonked on your screen for the regular human who doesn't understand that stuff. It doesn't make sense to most people. Now acoustics, again, are only tangible if the card is sitting right next to you in your computer. You'll be able to tell if it's loud or not. The overall size of this card is it's big guys, it's, it's got it's a 2.7 slot card that measures around 30 centimeters in length. It's, this is probably one of the biggest 3060s and if I'm being honest, it's probably way too big for a 3060. The benefit here being that this card is silent and cool. Now as far as RGB, it's the same story here with all the other ROG Strix 30 series cards. It's got a lot of RGB. There's RGB along the edge of the card and into the fans as well. For power connectors, it only uses a single eight pin PCIe power connector, unlike some other cards that we're gonna be covering. Very confusing times. As far as pricing, you can look at it. It's on your screen right now. It is what it is. It's actually too expensive for what it is if you ask me. Uh, this isn't just in relation to the ROG version either. This is all of them. MSRP is basically a sick and cruel joke. It's just not gonna happen anytime soon. And if I'm being honest, there's no 3060 right now that I can recommend because the prices are just way too high. If they were more affordable, I would definitely recommend the 3060. If you're lucky and you do find one at MSRP, you've basically discovered a unicorn or like some mythical creature that doesn't actually exist. All right, let me know what you guys think about the RTX 3060, not just this ROG one, just the whole card in general. I've seen a few people being able to get them, but they're at inflated prices and most other people have been pretty unsuccessful from what I've seen. Another day, another unobtainium GPU. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you like this video, like and subscribe. We upload almost every single day, so yeah, do a thing. Like the video if you liked it. If you hate it, hit the dislike button twice. If you wanna get early access to videos like this one, float plane, you like the music you heard here, I make it, it's on Patreon. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and yeah, 3060, 12 gigs of VRAM. It's weird, like I said in the last video, it's weird. You don't need it for a card like this. I don't know. There's nothing that makes 
the you need the 12 gigs of VRAM either, like for a card like this. And I've seen people say, oh, it's a cheap workstation GPU. Is it? Is it? Thanks for watching.